Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Okay, future spoiler alert now. For those people who've just seen the unboxing of this CZ457 synthetic varmint, to which I said I was going to put an Element Optics Helix 2 to 12 by 50 um, with the HDLR scope on it, well, I'm not going to because the HDLR scope is still on the 457 beach stock, and I might just leave these alone so I can shoot them side by side. Let's have a little look at that one later, but just for now, I'll just pop that out of the way. This is the Tipton Gun Butler, which is a really handy um, tool station, and I thought I'll just get this out while I'm using it so I can show you I'm setting up this scope, because I do actually have another Element Optics Helix scope. Now this is the non-HDLR version, but it's the same optic other than the turret. And I have used this scope, it's gone back in its box and it's back out again now, and it's going on to another test rifle. So this one has got the standard cap turrets, but you can take the cap turrets off and put the little rings around to protect the thread. So I'll just pop this out of the way. And I thought, since while I thought since while I am setting up a gun, I'll do it again on camera again so people can just have another opportunity just to see the way I set rifles up. I've got another Harris bipod which I'll be putting on this. I'll just put that to one side somewhere where it won't drop off the bench and I'll show you this tips and gun butler. So as you can see here, it's got two tall V-notched rubber lined support so you can put the gun up on those and make sure it's nice and flat level you can twist it a little bit and you've got good alignment through it for when you want to set your scope up and align your scope if you do like using levels you can tweak it slightly to hold its check its vertical position how much it's canting put your bubbles on it things like that and if i just take it out you'll be able to see the inside i've got a bottle there which is some barrel cleaning solvent i've got patches cleaning rods and a few of the tools i use every day but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to use it today while I am setting up this rifle for use. I need some air gun or rim fire scope rings which have the 11 millimeter dovetail dimension. So I'm gonna pop these on first and uh, I will use the torque wrench, torque wrench I have here. I'll slot this one on the back. These are worn rings. These have been on and off quite a few of my review guns, so I'll just pop that on there now and just nip it in place because everything will go on loose until it's ready for final positioning. Um, it's interesting to note the birds outside are tweeting so loud I don't actually need to overlay any additional music, which I used to put on videos to just make up for the little bit of a dull echo, but I've uh, improved my um, setup since then and I don't get that dull echo now. So the bird song in these, uh, this nice April day is quite nice while I'm doing this for you all. So I'll just take the ring tops off. I'm just gonna tip the screws out of those ring tops just so I don't lose them anywhere. Because these are what I would sort of term over center rings. So they do just need carefully um, spreading apart when you put them over the scope just to make sure they don't scratch anything. Now I think it's a fairly good testament to element scopes and these rings that I must have had these rings for two years. There's not a mark on them. I believe the sintered steel construction and this element scope is probably three months old and it's probably been on at least three rifles by now. So I'm just going to put that there in approximate position just so I know where it is. Now, if you look at these rings, you can probably see them there or maybe see them on the ceiling camera. They need to be just sort of sprung open very slightly so that they clip over the tube because if I just sit them there, they don't actually clip down. And the way to do that is you can get two Allen keys or Torx wrenches or anything like that, just something that will fit in the little hole and you can just gently squeeze them together and it will just allow it to just open up and clip over the top and slot in position so you're not going to scratch anything. If I do that again with this one, put one in there, one in there, and literally just squeeze them together and it will just pop over the top. And once it's over the top, you've got a little bit of freedom of movement and it will slide around slightly until you tighten everything in place. Let's pick this uh, T15 Torx back up and just put the screws back in. Nothing's tightened up yet. It's a little bit tricky doing this on camera because sometimes if I'm doing it on camera, where I need to be is sort of in the way of the camera. So I'll go through the procedure and I'll explain it as I go away anyway. I fit a lot of scopes to a lot of rifles. 
week in, week out. There are many methods for the ways people like to do scopes for their own personal style. I'm not really going to disagree or argue about any of them if that's what they want to do. I know what I do and I know what works for me because when I take this rifle out here now, I'm just going to pop these up. Essentially, the way I want to do it, let's just switch that scope camera around. The way I want to do it is I want to have the vertical post of the reticle going through the bore of the rifle. There are reasons for which that isn't, isn't technically perfect, which is the subject of a far, far longer video than this is, but it's the method I use. And funnily enough, no one ever picks up one of my rifles and said, this scope's wonky, because I tend to go off the actual mechanics of the gun rather than the stock itself, but there are, there are endless reasons for doing it different ways for different types of shooting sports. This is my way. So I'm just looking at this now. It's probably a little bit close to me. I'm just gonna slide it forward slightly get my eye relief where I want it. And I think somewhere about a tiny bit further forward, they've got quite long eye relief, the element scopes, they're all magnum recoil eye relief, so it'll be 100 millimeters. And something about like that looks right there. Now, I'll probably just tweak and refine this a little bit as we go along. I'm just gonna drop the magnification slightly. Check it again there, that looks good. Now. Interestingly, on the CZ, you don't need to so much use the bore because you've got a nice red marker on the back of the bolt, which is the cocked action indicator. Um, the only thing is, different bolts are slightly different. Different rings can sometimes slightly offset misaligned scopes. So make sure you're picking quality, decent rings, um, making sure everything is actually in line because there's no point having it out of line and then twisting the scope to accommodate for that. So it's one thing to look out for. There is actually a handle in the gun butler, so you can pop that up, pick it up, and because it clicks in position, you've actually got some control without the tools rolling and spilling all over the place. The weight of the bear unit is three pound one ounce, which is just shy of 1,400 grams. Now, depending on how many tools you put into that, it will quickly add up on that. But this is, you know, it's a deeply injection molded unit. You've got grooves on the top to put cleaning rods in. You've got little slots for tools, slots there for other tools. So I could perhaps put, you know, a torque wrench in like that, whatever I needed to do for fast access and then lay them down when I'm not using it. So for example, if I want the T15, pop it in there and I've got that straight away. And then the gun goes back in there. The actual distance between the support is 21 inches or 530 millimeters. So it does give you a reasonable wheelbase to accommodate the gun with. And of course, if you have got a bipod fitted, which will be on here, you can just move it forward like that. And there is enough space you can operate around sling swivels as well if they're attached to the gun. So going back to the rifle, I'm just going to move the rings just a little bit because I want to just change the spacing on them slightly to give me a little bit more eye relief on the scope. And I'm just gonna move that rear ring forward. Now, I use a torque wrench for pretty much everything to do with scope rings. These are T15 Torx fittings, so I'm using my torque wrench, which is set at two newton meters. If you want to convert that to inch pounds, Google is your friend. I would be doing exactly the same for you, but I thought you might want me to use my time a little bit more profitably than calculating units for you. So back in here, I'm just gonna align the scope again. And I'll give you a little tip now. If you go right back from the scope, the exit pupil becomes tiny. And if you move the exit pupil down to the bottom of the reticle crosshair, you can actually more easily align it. And it actually looks very, very easy to line up and straight. And if I do them like that, I'm almost certain that when I get to the field, to the range, wherever I'm taking the rifle, it's going to be correct when I'm on the floor prone and actually shooting the rifle. So it's well worth just having a bit of a play about with these things, making sure you're happy with the way yours is set up. Because although, you know, it can be done for you, there's no point complaining if you don't like the way they do it. So I'm now going to nip these down and I'm gonna use the usual process, process of going alternate sides in alternate sequence. Because now I've aligned the scope with the rings ever so slightly loose, I can just nip them in position. This is what I said about the fact it's difficult doing this on camera because I'm kind of in the way of the cameras. But I just continue little quarter turns, eighth turns at a time until we get that click from the torque wrench and then I'll do the front one. If the scope's got four screws on top of it, I'll do front right, rear left. 
rear right, front left. And I'll go in that diagonal sequence to make sure that there's nothing being put out of alignment when you're tightening it together. And on these, these are just two rings. It's only a rim fire anyway, so it's very, very little recoil to worry about. And that will just allow me to tension that. Now, two Newton meters is actually only finger tension for me holding that. I don't even have to, you know, grip it with my hand and torque it down that hard. So there we go. That is the rifle set up, ready to use. I suppose I should give you the footprint size of this Tipton gun butler, which is 23 and a half inches or just under 600 millimeters. And the width on it for stability is nine inches or 230 millimeters. And it does give a very stable setup for sort of tweaking, moving, adjusting guns. And especially when you're cleaning guns and you've got the bolt out and you've got a long cleaning rod going backwards and forwards through it. And the other place that's really useful to have is when you are actually bore sighting the rifle. Because when you initially set it up, you can look here, you can look down the bore, you can look here, and you can look down the bore. And you can make sure the gun isn't moving to make sure you are actually getting those two things correspondingly pointing in the same direction. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell. Keep track of my weekly uploads. And if you go all the way through to the end of the video, there's a link to click on for British Shooting Show tickets 2024. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.